we are trying out something new or i'm trying out something very new today which is this restream platform which is very exciting um and i want to welcome today on my happy chat Billyanna hutchinson i hope i'm saying your name right um so so the happy let's just introduce the happy chat idea for a moment we're just going to be chatting that's literally what we're going to be doing here there's no like formal interview we're just going to be chatting and sort of learning a little bit about each other and about mental health which is a really big important thing obviously that I talk about and also about plant-based diets which of course Biliana is your you know is your business so first of all let's take the happy chat bit so the happy chat this is a new thing that I'm doing is I just want to chat with people who are doing awesome stuff out there I work I, I work with people who have either socially conscious or an environmentally conscious way of working in their business and it might be that their business is that or it might be that their business is something else but they either put some profits into those things or um, the way that they run their business is done so in in such a, a socially conscious or envir environmentally conscious way and what I do is I help people to basically not burn out which is what I did um yeah, yeah. so um, but, um Biliana you as I understand work with women it is women isn't it yeah women who work in sort of international development is that yes. right yes which is just like amazing <laughs> using plant-based diet yeah yes tell yes. me a little bit tell well like let's just start like tell me stuff tell me some stuff <laughs> right okay. <laughs> okay so let me tell you some stuff <laughs> well that, why well let's just start with what the, the group of women I work with and why I work with them, right? So, so as you said, I work with professional women, women in international development, but I also work with business um, owners, right? So women entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, this doesn't mean that I'm going to turn men away, but women are my target group. And that's because I was a woman in international development. And international development is really working for international organizations, humanitarian organizations. Um, very often, uh, a lot of charities work, as you guys here in the UK very well know, mm -hmm. in areas of uh, natural disaster, but also conflict and post-conflict areas. And that's what I did for 12 years wow. in my previous life. <laughs> so... Okay. So I did that. I start. I, I did that. I started in 1999, and that's when my country turned into a post-conflict zone. So I'm originally Serbian, and um, I went in 99. I I went down south, south part of my country, which is now Kosovo. Depending on who you talk to, it's a different country or not. Okay. Uh, that's one of the realities of a of post-conflict zones. Um, but that's where I went to and started working with the United Nations uh, as an interpreter first, Serbian, Serbian English. And and I I thought I would be there for six months. Like everybody else, you know, uh, my family ended up being in a really um, tough economic situation. But that was the reality for, for most of the country, the vast majority of people there. And I thought, right, OK, so I need six months working with the United Nations and you know we will be able to solve this financial struggle that we were in and then i'll come back continue my studies and you know life will go on uh then 12 years later <laughs> you know i found myself in afghanistan actually by, by the, the a, a, a whole complex situation and and circumstances ending my career but uh but yeah so you know the first six months uh passed and i was like hmm well, this was good but if i stay there and for another six months we could do this and this and this right. and you know six months turned into a year into five years into 10 years and, and 12 years so so yeah and 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 because i knew how women you you mentioned you went through a burnout most of the women that i've met in my life go through that push through because they put themselves to the bottom of the list, yeah. you know, of the to-do the list. Yeah. And it is exactly the same 
with women in international development, except that there's that whole set of other circumstances that they live in and that they can't change, right? Yeah. The, the, this is a situation that they absolutely cannot impact. No. But they can do things for themselves to make their life easier and make it easier on their body and their mind yeah. uh, to push through um, very complex um, circumstances that they live in. So I'm really, I mean, fascinated. And I think people listening will be really fascinated because that is not, it's not your average job, is it? It's not. <laughs> no, it's not nine to five. No. <laughs> And I, you know, I'm fascinated by maybe opening the door a little bit to talk about what on earth is that like? Because I understand you've worked in, you know, conflict zones in, you know, in the middle of war, right? Yeah, it was right after the war. Yes. Okay. Uh, but then, so so I spent about I spent nine years in Kosovo, and that was post conflict area. But post conflict areas, you know, are not you know things are not happy there life is not happy yeah. it's a full of struggle infrastructure is um destroyed and the, the whole place is going through a rebuild phase mm -hmm. right but at the same time you have that so it's just absence of war right so the conflict is still there but it, it's like cold war right it's conflict is still there because the the society and the 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 um, ethnic groups are on e different sides mm -hmm. and everything is really fresh, especially when a lot of lives um, have been lost, which is usually the case. So, you know, there's that tension constantly and then riots and um, um, uh, here in the UK, uh, how, how, what is it called? Um, what is it called? The conflict in Northern Ireland, they call it's not conflict, it's not war, it's troubles, right? Yeah. So troubles always, uh, tr troubles happen, you know, yeah. and they, they, this would, sometimes that would last for an afternoon, but sometimes that would last for days. So, so there's always that, um, that thinking, there's always that worry about your own personal safety, safety of your team as well. It's not just you, you know, it's, it's just everybody else who works in your team. And then, your team in the field, right? Which is usually national staff uh, who are implementing the project and they are there on the ground. Mm -hmm. Many a times you will be on the ground with them, but many a times you will not because it's not safe. So depending on the situation where you are, for example, that was the case for me in Afghanistan. So so then you stay in the office and, and you kind of manage everything from the office, but your team is still there and you want them to be safe, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so there's that even if you're not in in danger personally yourself there's always that constant worry because you want your your people to be uh to be safe and un, unharmed yeah. um and and it's really it's a constant adrenaline rush right and as much as you you for example in in when i worked in kosovo you we would still go out you know restaurants would be opened we would go out for dinner and drinks and you know we would work hard and party hard but then you come to a place like afghanistan for example and in certain areas like kabul and kabul like capital city like every capital city has its own life as opposed to just like here london you know it has its own life and then there's the rest of the country um and it's the same there so you will still have some sort of normal so to speak life where you can go out to certain places have coffee meet friends um you can't walk down the street on your own you know you have to have some sort of escort depending who you work with usually that would be um armed escort um but but then in another part of the country where I left later um, after seven months in, in Kabul, it's a complete lockdown. So you can't necessarily, you know, you can't leave your, your, your area, your house or office where you work. And if you do, you have to have, you go with a whole convoy. So there, there's an escort with you, armed escort. And, and depending on whether they approve that, 
you will go. If they say no, you're not going anywhere. You know, right. so wow. it's a really it comes with a you know it comes with a job. You know what you're getting yourself into yeah. when you go yeah. there. But there's a certain loss of, of, of freedom of just yes. being able to do do what you want. And in terms of sort of managing that anxiety, I mean, I I don't I have no idea what that's like and, and to have that level of anxiety, the constant level of anxiety, in, in knowing it, a, about your own well being. And I and I appreciate I really appreciate what you're saying about worrying about others as well. And I think you know that's something that women do a lot of, yes. right? Yes. So I'm not saying that men don't worry about others, but I think as 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 parents, as 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 as, as women, as mothers, it's that mother hen instinct, isn't it? Yes. Of making sure that your team is okay, um, making sure that everyone's okay. And uh, uh, my goodness, in a in a in a normal job, if you like, yes. you do that with your team. You yeah. want, you, know, you notice that somebody's a bit off, um, yes. and you want to make sure that they're okay. I mean, just. I mean, presumably you're leading a team in that. How yeah. do you, you know, how do you do that? How, I mean, surely that that's, do you feel like, or did you feel that people were affected by that level of, of stress? Or do, do you think you get used to it? What's, what's it's a, it? it's really interesting because it, it becomes part of your everyday life. Right. And so you don't oh you don't say oh I'm really stressed you know or you you it it's just part of of an everyday life really it's it's part of the job right so yeah. some days it can be worse than others some days are you just breeze through and then other days when an incident happens or you know when there are always predictions right so the security experts know or can sort of say the circumstances are changing and uh, and then you come hmm, okay so this might happen then you have right so we're gonna not send team out for example that day because it might be dangerous keep them in and you rearrange so there's always plan a plan b plan a usually doesn't work <laughs> so yeah. you always rely on plan b but um but yes it, it it's just part of the, of the job you don't really think about it that way okay. you know it, it just comes with the territory so, so that the next question's got to be, what's, how's, how's your mental health out there? I mean, how does, how is that affected? Is it affected? What you know, what what's that like? It's absolutely affected. Like I, uh, I, um, for example, um, I drank a lot. I wouldn't get drunk, but I would drink every day because our adrenaline is high, right? So, right. The, yeah, there has to be some involved. You work out a lot. Okay. You, you, because you have to spend, especially in places like Afghanistan, you can't, you know, just slam the door. I'm going for a walk because I had it with you guys. You know, I need half an hour alone. So you can't do that. Right. So then you hit the gym um, or you hit the gym, or the gym. The gym. <laughs> gym, gym. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes gym as well. <laughs> so, gym with gym. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so you know, um, or or yeah, exactly, or both. So you go out for your workout, and then you meet friends, uh, or you catch up with your friends because you have to vent somewhere, right? And then you go out for dinner, maybe a couple of drinks, and then come back and work. You know, work some more because there's not. For example, that was my rhythm. Like I would get up really early, um, say five a.m go to the gym, we had gym in the house, go to the gym for, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes, come back, make myself breakfast, start working. And then, you know, you work really long hours, really right. long hours, not only because there's a lot to do, but also because there's nothing else to do. There's nothing else. Right. Yeah, you know, so so then, right, okay, well, I could do this, you know, and then, um, and then in the evening you have your dinner, maybe some people go to the gym, go out, meet with friends, vent a little bit, have a couple of drinks, come back and then work because of my I work for the US agency and the home office would be open. By the time I finish my work there, the home office would open. It was a eight, nine hours difference, time difference. So then you catch up with them, you know, which is another hour, a couple of hours, and then you 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 go to bed, you read, you have some time for yourself in the evening, and then you hit and then you go to bed and then you know next Do day. It all is over again. And yeah. for and for how long? I mean how it 
it's an, it's not like when you're in the military, you're placed somewhere for a specific amount of time. Yeah. You, you're just there for for how long were your contracts? And did so, you have time off? Yes, we did, and it would be very often you would actually be ordered <laughs> to leave the country because you have you have to for your mental state. So depending on the organization or company that you work with, the cycles would be eight or twelve weeks. Right. Um, and then you leave for two or three weeks. Okay. You know, and then you come back, and because, because it's just it's really necessary. Like you have to go out. You know, <laughs> and. Yes, uh, and spend somewhere else two or three weeks and then come back yeah okay so, so, with, my, so, so with my sort of mental health professional hat on here yeah. what I'm, what i'm hearing is oh my goodness so there's like okay i get the, the going to the gym or, or being in the gym in your own home however you access it exercise brilliant so that's really good isn't yeah. it doing some exercise but everything else <laughs> sounds really unhealthy so like well you know, yeah the overworking right so because there's nothing else to do and there's so much to do that level of um stress that the stressful environment that you're working in just i guess outside of your compound or whatever you're in is it's stressful yeah. the people that you're working with on the ground are likely to be very stressed so not only that you're absorbing that from the people that you're working with not to mention the team mm -hmm. who are also working in the same environment <laughs> as yeah. you and then i hear like you know the drinking makes sense doesn't it that yeah. you sort of um smoking drinking yeah dr smoking drinking because you know it's that self-medicating yeah. so i can <laughs> my original question how is this for your mental health i'm really <laughs> now <laughs> you know but you know i mean yes that's exactly true and how you analyze it but I'm thinking now, you know, our office was very harmonious. Like we communicated a lot, uh, especially for my late last job. I had a fantastic team, you know, that, that my 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 managers, my the people above me, and my team. Um, we had brilliant time. We, we communicated a lot. We laughed a lot. Uh, you know, sense of humor is a little bit dark. I can't uh, which is also understandable but yeah but but it's really you know it, it was a happy office yeah. and that was the job that i wanted to do for the rest of my life yeah you know that was it yeah. because the job is very rewarding you go through a lot of stress you go through a lot of things that you can't change mm -hmm. either you know when they happen so you have to find ways there's a lot of creativity going on, a lot of um, you know problem solving skills. You really have to find different ways. Communication skills and people skills are amazing, unbelievably high because you deal with very, you know people from all over the world, uh, different cultures, different ethnicities, sensitivity levels, education level, uh, backgrounds, and you 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 know you dance through all that. And it is absolutely amazing. And then when you actually help someone and make their world a better place, yeah. you know, it is right. wow. You know, that's that that, your that's the why, isn't it? That's yes. what yes. you, do, yes. you do it. Yeah. So yeah, and, and that protective factor of having a team or, or I guess like a family, you must be so close. Yeah. Yes, that's the thing. That uh, because because we live in such harsh conditions, right? the relationships that we create develop much faster and much more intensive mm -hmm. and go deeper very quickly mm -hmm. you know so you become become friends really easily really quickly but also these friendships last mm -hmm. you know so it, it, it's really um soul rewarding yeah yeah so and this is so interesting for me because I know what you do with your your plant based business, right? And and now I, it makes total sense for me why those mm. women need this, right? So yeah. you've seen, you've lived it, and you know what's needed. So maybe tell me a little bit about why plant based. What what where's that? Because there's obviously that's another passion. I can see this as a passion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what so what's 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 the passion with the plant base and how have you married the two um i went so so at the end of my 
so what I did before actually led to where I am now because there's a story my, here isn't there I, yes. I know there's a story let's yeah. so so my previous career ended with the terrorist attack that I survived, survived in Afghanistan and uh i'm not gonna go through through the details of that but i'll tell you that it was seven of us in the house uh i lost two of my team members i was injured um i was shot um, other three members of my team were injured one two of them really badly they were in critical condition and then um so five of us arrived and four of us were injured. And that was, I didn't know it at the time, but that was the end of my career. And end of my life as I knew it until that point. Like everything changed for me. So I spent a few more days in Afghanistan until I went through, you know, I was medevaced to, uh, to Dubai, my team members as well. Um, and from there, I went home to Serbia and for, for treatment, physical and, and mental. But then my mental treatment also <clears throat> continued here in the UK. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the, um, during the attack, I also, I didn't know it at the time, but I survived it with my husband now. Uh, but we were not in a relationship then. So um, one of my, my close protection team who's my husband now he joined my team two days before that and we survived he saved my life with another of his colleagues who who lost his life that day and we started a relationship after that and and that recovery was very long it was very complex but we went through it together and and that's how i ended up because the physical recovery was, you know, for me, it was very short. It was only a few months. Uh, I w it was only my arm that, that was injured. And I have almost full uh, capacity back of my arm. So, so that was not a problem. You know, you go through physical therapy and, you know, um, it, as long as you're disciplined, it's going to go, go well. Mental recovery is a very different story, as you know. And... It was, it was for me when that happened. I was up. I, I was lost. Like I didn't. I had no idea. I I was standing in my mom's house because I went to to my mom's apartment, and I was just asking myself, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. You know. But because that that was it. That was the life that I wanted. I was I was happy at my job. I I just got a few months before got promotion. That was it. I was on my way to, you know, doing some amazing things and changing the world, right? Yeah. Um, and and then everything was finished, and I had no idea what to do, where, where to go, how, who, what, what happened? Mm -hmm. Like you know, nothing made any sense. Can I can I ask you about? So so you you felt like it was over. Was it was that pressed on you that it would be over, or was that your decision that that would be the end of the, of your career? Or later, it was the end. It was the end. I didn't realize at the time that that was actually the end, but or a beginning, right, of something very different. Yeah. But um, but but you know, bef before that event, before the attack. I always had that, and I think a lot of people can relate to that. If something bad happens, I just turn to work. You know, work is my cure. You engross yourself, right, into work. It, you shift your focus from whatever bad was happening, maybe a bad relationship, whatever it is. And you just work, 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 and then somehow everything clears, right? Whatever. A few months later, you're back to normal, you know, right? Let's move on. So I thought it would be the same with me. but. But my work, like everything that I believed, you know, everything that I worked for somehow was gone. Right. You know, like everything was just shattered. Mm. And 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 then obviously through the therapy, my 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 therapy said, because I I was like, right, you know, when can I go back to work? And you're like, well, that's not gonna be that easy. 
Right. You know, because you're going straight back into exactly the same conditions. It's, it, that that's it. Just, I mean, I was obviously diagnosed with a really severe PTSD, and it was just not happening. So, I, I because I didn't realize that my 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 recovery doesn't end when my arm heals. Right. You know. Yeah. So. So through my recovery, because everything was so complex and, and I had so many difficult emotions that I never felt before, like guilt, unbelievable guilt that I was here and my team members were not. Mm. Um, regret for decisions that I, that I made. And at that time I thought, well, if I didn't or did, that would never have happened. Right. Which of course is not the case, but but at that point you don't you know I I didn't know that I didn't realize that, mm. and I I I even if people told me that I wouldn't believe them, because it was just me. It was what I did, what I didn't do, that led to that attack and to the eventually death of my my team members, um, and that was so cemented in my head, um, and. And I was I was just trying different things, you know. It, it, I I was physically very active. My my husband and I um, traveled a lot. We went to see the families of, of our team members and uh, met them, and you know went to the Philippines to meet and to to just see how our other uh, team member is doing. And. We, we started a family, we, we have two kids uh, uh, since 2011, 2013, and then at one point, but, but things were just missing. I like guess as, as much as we worked on our mental health, we were on intensive therapy for five, six years, and but, but somehow our health, we were getting better, but it was not getting completely just right there yet. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, I, and you know, along the that mental recovery, we started facing physical issues. So I, my thyroid, I was diagnosed with an underactive thyroid. Mm -hmm. I was gaining weights and I couldn't get it off. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't sleep, you know, or if I did, I would be very restless. My skin started changing. I mean, it was just, you know, a whole chain of things that just started happening. And and I realized that something needs to be ha something needs to be done, but I wasn't sure what. And that's how I discovered a documentary that I watched about plant-based diet. And to me, that kind of made sense, but I wasn't really sure whether I would be able to do it. Mm -hmm. so I started a, a one-month-long experiment. Yeah. I said, okay, well, let me try first without meat, see what happens. And within that one month, I saw changes in me. And I thought, but this is just, just letting go of meat, you know? So if I actually, and it was not really much of an effort because I come from, in, in Serbia, the cuisine that we have is a mixture of Mediterranean diet, Hungarian, mm -hmm. Austrian. So there was always a lot of vegetables, you yeah. know, in the, uh, especially in summers, because summers are very hot, so you don't really eat heavy, heavy meals. So I said, okay, well, I tried, and I noticed differences. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, I started having more energy, and and that's, you know, how I was like, mm hmm so if I do this, maybe try for without dairy, for example, for mm -hmm. another period of time. There were challenges, of course. It was going up and down, you know, like everything else. And when I had to learn a lot, and I forgot so many things, and I burned so many meals. But <laughs> you know, uh, luckily for me, my husband likes to eat, and he's always willing to try food. So I was like, okay, well, that's fair. that's good. And um, and he he was also always really ready to just support that. Say, right, let's do it. You know, I'm I'm ready. I'm for it. And um, that was in 2007, early 2018. So it was eight years after the event, you know, after the attack. And and then I thought, okay, so if if we if this works without, we just started 
seeing all the changes that it had for our health, but it meant so much for our mental health because it gave us some balance. Like all of a sudden, our sleep improved. My 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 medications, my thyroid medications went down. The dosage. Um, I'm not saying that's because of the plant based diet, but it does have impact because I changed what I bring into my body, which yeah. obviously uh, changed the the hormonal mm -hmm. levels and and you know reactions and and balances. So so I thought, mm hmm this so much has definitely has to do with what we are starting to eat and how we are changing to eat mm -hmm. because my my outbursts and snappiness and that started going away and it but also it gave me that sense of control back and that yes. finally that wrap up you yeah. know like aha uh -huh, i can change things this is really me changing doing something and changing things for the better mm. and um and that's when i uh when i started my business that's how i actually started my business and at the beginning it was not really working with internet women in international development but later uh, but you know there was that niggling idea this is who i want to help because i i remember myself if i only did this you know at that time when i was in these places i would feel so much better even though i was you know fit and healthy sorry mm -hmm. but you know um i could have been feeling so much better yeah. so that's how i decided to actually focus on them so there's a there's a real sort of synergy between us both in that isn't there just thinking about who you've chosen to work with the people that you know and you know mm -hmm. what they're going through what they've because you've been there and similarly you know i've chosen the same in my business to to work with people who work in, uh, in socially um yeah. or, or environmentally thoughtful businesses because that's what i know from my sort of history yeah. but what i've come from so it's re it's really interesting how we we have to look after uh, i think the looker after us yes you know, the people like who are idea. out there yeah. doing that stuff and that's exactly how i feel about uh, about my business is like I just want to make sure that these people who are doing amazing stuff mm. in the world can be sustainable yes. it, it, with yes. what they do because it, it's it's kind of similar, isn't it? And you're doing that through through diet and through using using plant based, and I'm doing that through you know through through working out what it is that makes them happy and how to balance. Um, yes. So, so yeah, very, very similar, isn't it? And 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 also, I just love, I love plant based. So I I live a plant based life. Although, although I think I've said to you before, I'm a bit crap at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. The intention counts. You'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Um. I do have. I you know, it's that thing. Oh, I have an occasional egg. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> occasionally <yeah. laughs> but uh, but i love what you're doing and i love i just I, like i said there's such a synergy and i think uh, you know what you're doing is amazing tell me just a little bit about how you take people through you know how do you work with people do you work mm. with people on a one-to-one -one? do you work with them in groups and, and what do you do with it like if i was your client what would you do with me i'm interested to know <laughs> right well well my um so so i i do i do work with one one-on-one -on -one clients but my my main program is group uh yeah. program it's a small group three to four women because it's intimate enough for them to open um uh, and get that these two levels of support like group support and support from me uh but what i do is my entry point is nutrition but then we the, the program lasts for 12 weeks yeah. so we start with nutrition because that can give us results fairly quickly that you can notice and then give that motivation and that impetus that you say hmm, there are other things that i can change but and also just like i felt the changes uh, that I felt them accidentally. I, I didn't have any intention of getting there, but then I realized what is happening. So I, I lead from nutrition to changing habits, to talking about changing habits, um, talking about sleep hygiene, 
and stress mm. management, mm. but stress management in a particular level, which is creativity. And creative, I'm really big on creativity and stress management and mental healing and trauma healing and mental health because that creativity can be anything from coloring books to sculpting you know uh really there's a whole load of things that people can do and they they already know how to do it mm -hmm. and maybe they would like to try or maybe they did it before but you know then life happened and career and family and then they left it somewhere there in the past um because that gives us that sense of purpose and achievement um and molds that stress and whatever heavy emotions we feel into something beautiful where you can say oh, i made that you know That's just i can just see how amazing that must be for people yes. because you know as you were saying right at the beginning what did you do well i worked and then i did some i worked <laughs> some more because there was nothing else to do to to engage people in doing something creative in their time you know yes. maybe don't do the work maybe have some time off to do something like that yeah. that's so important isn't it to get that balance right yes um and and i can imagine that the groups that you do because i'm assuming they're all on zoom because people yes that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that must be an amazing space for those women to to meet other women doing the same thing yes. but not necessarily in the same place um exactly. but facing all the same stuff and you know to be able to really look after themselves in actually such a simple way with guidance yeah um because we don't do it do we i think we don't we no. just don't do it for ourselves i no. i don't, i mean i i'm i'm <laughs> talking the talk but i don't always do it. i have weeks where i'm like i know what i should be doing i mean i teach yeah. this stuff but i'm not yes. doing it. <laughs> i know i know we because forget we, to coach ourselves yeah yeah because, but that's it, isn't it? And that's, I guess, where we support each other as coaches, isn't it? Is that yeah. we communicate with each other and, and make sure that we're all looking after each other because yeah. we can't, you, nobody can do it on their own. No, no, I don't think, I don't think we can. As much as, I mean, I like time on my own and that's one of the things that, that I, for example, need every day, you know, like to have even 15 minutes, it doesn't have to be hours, just 15 minutes when I can sit and, and do my own thing. Even just, yeah, just anything, stare through the window, whatever it is. But, um, but it's really just getting in touch with our thoughts, like, okay, you know, emotions. Um, and our bodies sometimes too. Yes. It's, it's like, where am I holding tension and what's yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Can I just breathe a little bit? Right. And that was what that was one of the things that, for example, helped me a lot through my recovery. It was yoga, and that creative outlet, which was for me cooking that I never thought I would do. You know, if somebody you asked, want, me, like, you want to cook before then? No, wow. I, I, learned, <laughs> I learned to cook when I got my daughter. Because so, you have to feed her, really. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's that thing that apparently you have to feed children. <laughs> so. Okay, <laughs> so so that's how I learned, and you know, and that's how I discovered that that creative outlet. With you know, it was really combining the two. It was plant based diet and that creative outlet and cooking that really got me into wow. Yeah, you know that I, I realized because you know, problem solving is a creative thing to do, right? But we don't yeah. see that way. Maybe. Right. So, you know, whatever managers and CEOs and, and project managers, they, they just they solve the problem because uh -huh, there's the solution. But they actually don't realize that that's the creative way of thinking. And it's just sometimes can be applied. For example, running a business that is creative outlet. You know, maybe it doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be that at the beginning you will think about it as business. You know, you don't think about maybe oh i could maybe earn some money with that but but it is creative you're 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 making something 
It's really creative, isn't it? Yeah, creative. And but you're absolutely right. People don't necessarily see it, and I can, I can, I can tell you that from from you know from my from my other work that you know where we were working with people living with dementia, Mm. we were expecting people to um to to come up with with creative ways of working with people, and as soon as you use the term creative, we're going to do a creative activity, not just just not not just the team. But also those people, the clients that we're working yeah. with, like, oh, I'm not creative. I'm yes. scared of that. Yeah. Yes. Because we we were, I mean, I never considered myself creative. You know, if, if someone, yeah. uh, until, until that one point through my recovery, you know, I would never say, because for me, being creative meant being an artist yeah you know like musician or a painter or a sculptor or or i don't know even tattoo artist you know it, th- that's for me being creative you know really creating art but we don't i mean there's so many things that we create cooking is is art you know it's creative art but your you know. cooking might be art my cooking <laughs> oh <laughs> i'm sure you're not that bad <laughs> Well, I'm going to invite you over for dinner and you can decide. <laughs> I took a good curry. That's about oh. it. Oh, well, that's a start. That's a start. <laughs> so, I mean, it just sounds like for a start, I just love what you're doing. And that's why I've invited you. And I, re- and I just adore you. We've got such a lovely photograph, haven't we, of us? Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it when we first actually met saw each other's legs for yeah. the first time because we don't see each other on Zoom. And just this amazing embrace of a hug where we, I where know, we yes. and I just love that photograph so much. Um but that but I just felt such warmth from you and from from what you know what you're doing and what you've done in your story. This is the first time really that I've really caught up with you in terms of that story and how that's gelled together from from where you were and where you are now. And what a really exciting future um, in terms of what you're doing and how you're working with those amazing women. Yes. You know. well, I, yeah, they do change the world. And I thought if, you know, in order to do even a better job, which they already are, you know, heroes and superheroes, um, they can do better mm. because they will take care of themselves yeah. better. Yeah. You know? what, what, a, what a gift to give them. So I, I just want to say thank you from my heart for doing that work. It's really important work. And I'm really that I've got this optimism, which people some people sort of laugh at me because I'm so optimistic in this world <laughs> that it seems to be falling apart around us. But I'm so optimistic. And particularly when I speak to people like you, because I know that there are hundreds upon thousands of people doing amazing stuff yes. out in the world. And we don't necessarily see it. I mean, I before having a conversation with you I don't know what what what's going on in, with it with, yeah. you know with international missions and to know that there are people yeah. like that on the ground you know re- recreate or helping communities to recreate themselves and and to, yeah. to sustain and um you know, all that amazing stuff and, and times that by thousands and thousands and thousands yeah that's going on all the time just while we're getting up having a day and going back to bed again that's going on out there and we have to look after ourselves we have to help others look after themselves as well and i think that that's something that both of us have realized that we can do yes i love how you call that that's really that looking after looking after looking us, after right? us. <laughs> yeah that is amazing that's a really cool thing because i also and I also think, like you have a daughter, and I have a daughter, and I want them, I want my daughter to learn to take care of herself. Yeah, you know, so she doesn't learn that later in life, like I did through some shattering, horrible story or event. You know, but actually to know that she is important, and that it is important that she cares for her own needs. Yeah. Uh, first yes. you know not to push herself down that to-do list uh until one point maybe next month you know when she has like 45 minutes free yes. um but you know but actually that, that's that. the norm isn't it that's the norm for us yeah 
yeah well I'll just I'll I'll sort myself out in a minute I just need to sort yes. this out, or I need to sort this other person's problem and you know yeah. I, I, it's okay it's fine I'll do my bit in a minute and then my time never comes and then yeah. we're, we're burning out and we're knackered and and we can't do it and then you know it's that whole oxygen mask thing isn't it if we don't yes. put it on first yeah. then how the hell are we meant to look after yeah. everyone else it's not sustainable and no. I learned I learned that the hard way too you know I just thought you know oh it's okay I seem to be that's what I would say to I seem to be really resilient yes yeah right <laughs> oh it's okay yeah I'm all right yeah. no I seem to be really resilient don't worry about me yeah. and then poof, okay yeah. so that is building and building and building and building and building and building until it just takes you out of and course. You we and you're right we have to teach this stuff in schools don't we people yes. kids need to know how to to yes. really look after themselves and put themselves first in terms of their own health so that they so that we can care for everyone else yes um, exactly because our body you know our body and our mind can just push until a certain point yeah right yeah that's yeah. it and then they crash totally mine just switched off overnight yeah. just with that's it. it didn't work anymore and and that's the on that's the honest truth of it if we don't do something about it <laughs> your brain will go no or yeah. your, body, your brain your body or both will go yes no. not no. Happening. so i so, so amazing work for Rihanna. i i just i love and and i love the fact you know that we, we keep in touch and we're like like yes. really seeing each other grow and 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 in terms of that impact, um, it's it's amazing. And I love what you're doing. Thank and you very much. I love what you're doing. I, I honestly do. Because that is, that is the same thing. It's just a different angle, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Your yeah. entry point is is slightly different. Yeah. It? Yeah. But it's, yeah. the same, it's the same message, isn't it? Let's look after yeah. ourselves. Otherwise, yeah. how the hell are we going to change the yeah. world? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Who is it going to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone's got to do something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, how can people get hold of you, Billiana? Where are you? Uh, what, what, what are your socials? So I'm on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find me with my name, so Billiana Hutchinson on Facebook. Or and then you will see I have a, a group for professional and, and expat or inter, women in international development and on LinkedIn also with my um, with my name uh, just go to Bianca Hutchinson and search for for my name and you'll you'll find my profile and uh, I have a membership and my program is called Plant Based Wellbeing and uh, and my membership is called Plant Based Wellbeing membership and. And it's really about combining the two self care uh, with creativity, focus on creativity and, and sleep and change habits mm -hmm. and uh, doing it the way it works for you the best mm -hmm. and um, going predominantly plant based, if not exclusively. Yeah. Because that is, a, that is a long journey. <clears throat> is, yeah. But it is so blooming good for you, isn't it? It is. It is. Good for you and good for the planet. It's like a win-win, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you so so much for coming on the on my happy chat. And thank you um, for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Absolutely loved it. So, um, I will try now to uh, stop the stream. <laughs> this is always the funny <laughs> bit. I don't actually know how because I've never used it before. Um, so. I don't. Yes, I, don't I think yeah. I can do it. Okay, there's the button. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, and we'll see I'll see you again on the next happy chat. And do go and find Biliana on her socials and uh, find out what she's up to. Definitely give her a follow and say hello. So thank you, Biliana, and thank you everyone. Good night. Good night. Oh,